Hey everyone, this is Josiah Bawalda with Hybrid Audio Technologies, and today we're going to quickly run through inputs and outputs on using the new software version 4.06. Um, I had a couple of questions. For the most part, everything's still the same, uh, but just a couple new features that we'll go through here. So we're going to set up both uh, analog and digital, and if you are using one of the HEC extension uh, cards, we can go through that as well. Uh, just a quick video on this, so let's go ahead. We've already got the uh, DSP hooked up, powered up. We are ready to start. If this is your first time, make sure that you plug in the USB first before starting the software. Usually you'll hear a chime come through the computer letting you know that a new device has been plugged in. Once that happens, we can go ahead and we can click on the version 4 software here. Uh, it looks a little bit different than the 3.4 if you're familiar with it, um, but we're already set up so it's going to go ahead and tell us connect. If for some reason it's not seeing it, just like before, it'll say uh, start demo. Uh, but we're using the V8 DSP today. Uh, the software is available for it, so it's already uh, downloaded onto the uh, V8 DSP uh, from the previous video. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to connect and we're going to set up our inputs and outputs. Uh, this is the first setup to go onto the V8, so no setup's been loaded, so we always want to load into preset number one. And we'll go ahead and load into our main screen here. All right, so don't be overwhelmed by this screen if, if it's the first time you're seeing it. Uh, you should recognize this if, if you've used the version 3.4 software. A uh, new feature along with the version 4 software is we can click here and it'll size to any screen. So if you're using a tablet or you're displaying it on a TV uh, that's bigger than a laptop, you'll remember before in the version 3.4 3, software that it was, you know, it took up about two thirds of the screen. It didn't, it didn't fill everything, which made it a bit more difficult to tune with. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to go straight up to our inputs and outputs, which is the first thing we always want to set. And just like before, we are going to right click and get rid of everything here. Alright, and we're starting with a fresh page. So first thing that we're wanting to do is, depending on what inputs you're using, um, we want to go ahead and we want to label them on the left side of the input output screen. So uh, for the sake of this video we're using one set of full range inputs, uh, analog RCAs from a aftermarket head unit to the uh, channels A and B input on the processor. So I'm going to go front left and front right full, that's all I'll be using. And I'm wanting to use the left and right because, like I stated, those are the only full range inputs that we're using. Now if you decide you want to use the rest of the inputs off the back of the head unit, which are not necessary, uh, you could go ahead and you'd label them on here the same. You'd use your front lefts, make sure that it corresponds with something in the front. Left and right needs to correspond, and rears would need to correspond, and subwoofers would, would need to correspond. But for any, everything to make the DSP work is just one set of left and right full range inputs. So that's what we're doing here. So you'll see here we got our front left full. We want to make sure that it's going to correspond with front left something. So uh, we're using it, we're doing a three way here. So we're going to go front left high. Go ahead and tell it to remember uh, to preset all the filters. And then we're going to go front right high. Then we're going to go to our front left mids. And you'll see here that everything is still corresponding left and right all the way down. And then for E, we've got our front left lows, which are our mid bass, and front right lows, and then subwoofers. Now on the subwoofers, it's a little bit different than, than what we usually do. I want to go ahead and I add a front left and a front right, so we go 50-50 on the channels because the subwoofers are mono. Uh, so I want to make sure that it's getting all the information possible to properly be functioning. So I, I put left and right 50-50 and, and set them to mono, but other than that, we've We've set the um, the inputs correctly. We've set our outputs correctly, and then we then from this page we'd go on to setting up our crossovers. But let's say that we're also using digital. The DSP, um, the Helix DSPs have the option to um, use both the analog and digital at the same time. And by saying that, I mean that if you're listening to the radio, the radio is analog. Uh, you could also listen to CDs analog, but if you want to have higher quality from your CDs, 
you can run a digital Toslink cable straight back to the DSP and can go ahead and plug that in and uh, under the DCM page, which we'll go over here in just a second, we can have it automatic detect when a signal is going over optical and it'll automatically switch the, the source. So what we'll do after this is we'll go up here to digital routing and you'll notice that our inputs here, or sorry, our outputs here on the right side can't be changed now. The only way you can change them is on the main routing page. So our outputs will no longer change, but our inputs will. So we want to go ahead and we will get rid of everything just like we did before. And just like before, we are going to go front left high, which means that we need a digital in left on the left digital and right on anything that's right. And then I'll go 50-50 on the subs once again. Now, down here below on I and J, I'll quick mention this. This is line out one and two. You can use those if you're running a four-way or if you're running rear speakers or whatever you're wanting to do. You've got those extra two channels. The reason they say line out one and two right now, that's just default. If you wanted to, if you decided that you wanted to run uh, a second amplifier off of those channels. So for the V8 DSP, we've got uh, eight amplified channels, which I'm going to be using every bit of. So if I wanted to, for some reason, I wasn't getting enough power for the subwoofers, I had rear speakers instead. I could use GNH for my uh, rear speakers, and then I could use INJ as a line output to a, a bigger mono amplifier that can also be controlled by the, the processor, and um, it would run just the subs. So but for, for what we're doing, the V8 is plenty of power, so we go ahead and we're going to run our, our three-way with the rear fill subs here, uh, everything fully active, and we're done with our digital routing. Um, if for some reason you ran auxiliary or heck routing, you wanted to put a um, auxiliary cable in uh, using one of the Helix extension cards that plug into uh, the V8 or the P6 or the, the DSP Pro or any of the models that'll take a heck card, um, you would come onto this page and you'd do the same exact thing. You'd want to set up your left and right for auxiliary, um, and that would basically control if you decided you wanted to put. Um, you can add an extra optical input or output uh, as well as your input. You would do the same thing if you were running the Bluetooth module. You need to come to your auxiliary page and make sure that you set your auxiliary or the Bluetooth will not work correctly. So come here and we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to erase everything just to get a fresh start. And we would do the same thing. Auxiliary left and right. Make sure it all corresponds with the left and right on the uh, output side. And now our Bluetooth or our auxiliary cord or the new optical input that we just uh, installed into the into the processor by using the module will work properly now. And we can come back here to our main routing. Nothing has changed. We still have our analog page. Everything is separated to keep it nice and easy. We have our auxiliary and our digital. And from here, we would go on to our DCM. You'd come over here to signal management. And you could see here under digital input that when it sees a 30 dB, um, sees a 30 dB source or signal, that it will automatically, via signal detection, switch over. Okay, So that would be if we're using the CDs. Um, so our, uh, our other, other than that, you know, unless, it's, unless it's physically seeing an optical through the, or it's, it's actually signal detecting a signal from the optical cable, it will run analog. Uh, if for some reason, when it sees Bluetooth, if you're using the HEC module, as soon as it sees a 30 dB signal, it'll come on within six seconds. Now you can always dummy this down, you can have it switch over faster, it's up to you. Uh, you, can, you can do this um, uh, up to uh, 10 seconds, I believe, uh, 300 seconds, um, which is a new feature inside of the software. Um, so you can, you can switch your sensitivity, switch your release point. Uh, basically, I, I don't mess with this um, 
page very often unless I'm on auxiliary mode using E and F on the high level inputs. Uh, you can use that there. If for some reason you have navigation coming through the head unit, you can plug E and F uh, with a high level source or speaker wires from the back of the head unit for navigation to come through the DSP because it usually will not. Um, and it'll automatically switch over when it sees that 30 dB signal. I uh, hope this helps. Um, look, look out for the next video. We're going to set some crossovers and be playing music. Uh, thanks for tuning in.